welcome to Labor Lens. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thank you for joining us on today's edition of the program. We will continue on our focus on NLC at 40. But first, let's take the feature segment. We will be right back. The Nigeria Labor Congress, NLC, is an umbrella organization for trade unions in Nigeria. It was founded in 1978 following a merger of four different organizations, Nigerian Trade Union Congress, Labor Unity Fund, United Labor Congress, and Nigeria Workers Council. The numerous affiliated unions were restructured into 42 industrial unions. During its history, conflicts with the military regime twice led to the dissolution of the NLC's national organs. The first in 1988 under the military regime of General Ibrahim Babangida and the second in 1994 under the regime of General Sani Abacha. Under Nigerian's military government, labor leaders were frequently arrested and union meetings disrupted. Comrade Asan Sumonu, who was the first president of the Nigerian Labor Congress between February 1978 to February 1984, and under his leadership, the union was able to achieve the first minimum wage in May 1981. The labor movement has done a lot, not only for the workers of Nigeria, but also for the people of Nigeria and for the Nigerian nation. Because if you remember, in the last 40, 40 years of its existence, we have had military dictatorships, we had civilian administration, another civil, uh, military intervention before we started having, you know, uh, uninterrupted civilian administration, democratic uh, dispensation from 1999. So, and uh, if you see the ups and downs for the country itself during, you know, these 40 years, <laughs> but for the Nigerian Labour Congress, the fate, the, the fate of Nigeria would have been worse. NLC went through rough times. In 1988, its national structures were dissolved by the Babangida military regime because of its opposition to the Structural Adjustment Program, SAP, and fuel price hikes. Later, an administrator was appointed to govern NLC. In 1994, the military regime of General Sani Abacha again dissolved NLC's National Executive Council and appointed a sole administrator because of the union's insistence for the restoration of democracy. The first General Secretary of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Aliu Dangiwa, spoke on how the labour centres were able to sustain structures, create state councils, introduce check-off dues and was able to show commitment and industrial peace. These also gave rise to the introduction of the May Day celebration. Because of the commitment of the state councils, they brought the raw data. They participated in the decision making. They go and implement whatever it is at their state level effectively. That helped in the growth and the strength and the development of Congress. Following democratic reforms in the country, some of the anti-union regulations were abolished in January 1999. The same month, Adams Oshomale was elected president of the reform organization. Today, the NLC has more than 40 affiliated unions, and according to their own figures, they cater for up to 4 million members. This makes the NLC one of the largest trade union organizations in Africa. People's perception of trade union and trade unionism was that it's only vagabonds, you know, people who have been dismissed by their employers who, who for want of anything, become agitators and go to the trade union for a career. Our time, our time, we brought respectability to the trade union movement. Recently, conflicts between the government and the NLC has escalated due to the organization's opposition to higher fuel prices. The price increase are the result of the decisions by the Olushegun Obasanjo government to dramatically reduce subsidies and to deregulate the purchase and sale of fuel. 
The NLC has led several general strikes protesting the government's fuel price policy. In September 2004, the NLC gave the federal government an ultimatum to reverse the decision to reintroduce the controversial fuel tax or face a nationwide protest strike. The strike threat was made despite the fact that a federal high court judgment in an earlier dispute had declared the organization lacking legal power to call a general strike over government policies. Nigeria has had many colorful labor leaders, starting from Chief Michael Imodu, the nation's first union leader born in 1902. His labor activities started as a member of Railway Workers Union. Under his leadership, the union demanded for higher pay, the casualization of workers, and for the improved conditions for technical workers. NLC's first very dynamic president in 1978 was Alaji Aksan Sumonu, who was succeeded by Ali Churuma in 1984. The late Pascal Bafiau was NLC's president from 1988 to 1994. One of the most exciting and memorable NLC leaders ever was Adam Sushomole, who came from the textile sector in 1999 when democracy was restored after military rule. He later became governor of Edo State. Oshomole led strikes and protests against fuel price hike. He also negotiated 25% wage increase to public sector workers during Obasanjo's administration. After Oshomole came, Abdul Wahid Omar of the Teachers Union, who was elected NLC president in 2007. Then came the current president Ayuba Waba, who came from the Health Workers Union and was elected in 2015. Struggles in the interest of workers, some of them are systemic and we can anticipate them. There are others that do emerge periodically, even without expectation. Uh, even those that you are tackling, uh, there are dynamics associated. Uh, they can become even more complicated and all that. Uh, clearly, as of today, among the challenges uh, that we face are uh, the issues of the huge unemployment, which renders the labor market uh, uh, very problematic. The last few years has, however, been very tough for NLC, where rulers once trembled at the mention of its name, and especially when it's threatened to go on strike. These days, NLC is not as potent as it used to be. Many reasons account for this turn of events, including the collapse of some powerful economic sectors, factionalism among labor leaders, and also the weak national economy. After the election of WABA, General Secretary of National Union of Electricity Employees, Joe Ajero, who contested with WABA, never accepted the results. Last year, Ajero and the president of the National Union of Petroleum and Natural Gas Workers, Nupeng Igwe Achese, jointly announced the formation of a parallel labor center called the United Labor Congress. Even though the United Labor Congress is not recognized by the government and not yet registered, its existence has further weakened NLC. As we move ahead, we need to pursue the issue of unity in the movement. The issue of unity, is, for me, is not negotiable. It's clearly not negotiable. The, the fact that we have had problem of disunity has weakened our, our ability to pursue quite a lot of things. And I think now we have to sacrifice. We have to forget about self-ambition. We must genuinely work on reconciliation so that our colleagues who appear aggrieved, who have left for one reason or the other, should come back so that we have a united front. The NLC at 40 celebration was celebrated for three days. And on this occasion, thousands of workers were in attendance. Many were given awards and some were called to the NLC Hall of Fame. For the NLC to continue in the struggle to defend workers' interests, it was concluded at the 40th anniversary celebration that workers need a political platform through which they can collaborate with credible civil society groups, actively participate in policy making and drive implementation process. Attaining the next level of national development also means government must become responsible and responsive in meeting the plight of the working class, ensuring that the dignity of labor is realized and the potentials of industry is maximized.
NSC should come together and provide another pl political platform to present a credible alternative to the ruling cl uh, class that will, uh, will, will pursue the ideological concept of socialism, whereby governance should be about developing the people's welfare and providing security, equality for the people with social protection and social network that will capture those that are vulnerable, the women, the, the aged, and even the youth. What the Nigerian workers want now is to see how they can contest for power through the Nigerian, the Labour Party. The Labour Party will be rejuvenated so that Nigerian workers will rally around their political party so that they can also contest for this position so that instead of asking for minimum wage, they will now be determining minimum wage. And instead of them to ask government for allowances, they will now be determining allowances because they will bring in people of credibility who will also run power. And the Labour Party will now be able to stand. As a matter of obligation, Congress cannot afford to feed the people. Congress cannot afford to give alternative to itself. So we must continue to provide leadership because certainly we are already experiencing lacuna. So we must ensure that we don't give room for people to doubt our capacity. And as a matter of fact, multi-functions are already before our expectation. And we're going to carry out this responsibility with all sense of commitment, ensuring that Nigerians will see the commitment and have hope in the movement. On the profile interview segment this week, I will be speaking with the president of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Comrade Ayuba Waba. He will be telling us the several struggles the Nigerian workers are faced with in the moment and also probably the possible solutions for the Nigerian workers. Take a listen. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you very much. NLC at 40, and you are the sixth president of um, NLC. What do you have to say about the struggles, the success, and maybe the failures? Uh, it has been a history of struggle, a history of contestation, and uh, from all our own little beginning in 1978 to where we are today, as you rightly put it, I'm the sixth NLC president. First, it's a real privilege, because out of millions of workers, for you to be given an opportunity to provide leadership is certainly an opportunity and uh, basically also is a challenge. Well, uh, from our little beginning in 1978 to date, uh, as I said, it has been a life of struggle and contestation. Uh, if you look at clearly from where we are coming from, there have been a lot of successes, have been a lot of challenges, and uh, also a lot of uh, areas also we have not been able to succeed. Uh, clearly speaking, this has been the dynamic because an organization uh, with a very uh, he, good history as NLC. Uh, certainly, uh, those history in some cases have been well documented, but in some cases, we need to tell our story. And that's why we are celebrating actually NLC at 40, uh, because nobody can tell a better story than people that live in those periods and also people that participated in those struggles. Uh, so, clearly speaking, as we said, there have been a lot of successes, a lot of uh, challenges, and uh, also a lot of uh, uh, areas where we have not been able to succeed. So coming and looking backward, uh, clearly this organization, I can say, have been able to be very consistent in the issue of defense of workers' rights, defense of pensioners' rights, and uh, also contestation uh, about policies and programs that we feel are detrimental to the majority of Nigerians. And I can give you clear examples of where we have had contestation. First is the issue of SAP. You remember the first NLC, what we are, they were actually confronted with. Apart from uh, the issue of bread and butter, which borders on the issue of welfare and well-being of uh, members, is the issue of also uh, neoliberal policies imposed by uh, other interests outside the interests of Nigeria. And uh, those uh, issues have dominated our contestation. First is the issue of SAP. And then first also around the 81 period is the issue of the first minimum wage. And uh, secondly, is also the issue of even the survival of NLC. Because you also know that uh, even from the beginning of the inception of NLC, there have been uh, a kind of uh, attempt to certainly not get NLC registered. Uh, because uh, we need to tell this story that NLC was not merely a formation of law. No. 
the four labor centers then at the burial ceremony of one of the treasurers of the then four labor centers agree to actually form one united NLC for the advancements of workers' interests. That is what we call as uh, the Apena Declaration. That was a process that was driven by uh, workers and the unions. But at that time, government was not happy. So what they did was actually to prescribe that move. Not only that, they instigated about few people to write a petition so that there will be a commission of inquiry, which they did. And arising from that, that was how they banned labor leader number one, Michael Imodu, and 11 other people. So we are used to this issue of contestation and also uh, the uh, elites not wanting uh, institutions like NLC to exist. But certainly, we must, as a country, and as a people, continue to strengthen institutions such as NLC. Because in any situation where you don't have strong institutions and you have only strong individuals, that will not go well for the system. It will not be able to deliver. Uh, today, uh, most countries around the world, they are stronger because they have strong institutions. Even the fight against corruption, if you don't have strong institutions, certainly it can't stand the test of time. And that's why I think part of the foundation that was laid by our founding fathers is to have one, a conscious effort to try to build an institution that will remain focused to the ideals of our founding fathers. And all through our history, all our leadership have tried to conform to those principles that when you see wrong in the society, you don't need to salmonize over it. You need to point to even the powers that be. We should speak to power that these issues are not correct and therefore we must be able to uh, engage them in contestation from military to civilian. This has been the philosophy of NLC and all subsequent leadership, including myself, will have to conform with this solid foundation that have been laid by our founding fathers. So far as the NLC president, what would you say has actually been the challenges you've faced so far? Well, you can see that uh, there have been a lot of changes in the world of work. Not only that, even the political dispensation is not quite different from other regimes. Uh, there have been continuous attack on workers' rights. There have been issues of serious contestation. And uh, the issues have not changed because why they have not changed is because the key actors that still determine our internal policies are still those key actors that have interest in Nigeria. IMF and World Bank, that's the truth. And at the inception of every regime, from military to civilian, you see them coming, calling. Two issues, devaluate your currency, uh, remove subsidies, uh, privatize all public enterprises. These policies have taken us nowhere. And therefore, that is why the issue of contestation have remained. In fact, they will say, reduce workforce. We remember that. Even in the present dispensation, when IMF call, come, came calling, what was their recommendation? One is remove subsidy. Privatize all public enterprises. Three, uh, reduce the workforce. Four, is uh, the issue of uh, uh, sale of public enterprise. So this has been the contestation. And therefore, this has remained a challenge for all of us. If we cannot develop internal policies that will be homegrown to address our peculiar problem, quite different from other parts of the world, then we have not arrived. And this has been the issue. Within our system, you still have those people that are planted from IMF and World Bank. They determine what happens. They determine what process is driven. Not in the interest of Nigerian citizens, but in the interest of few. And therefore, this has remained a central issue to our contestation. NLC have actually been at the center of contesting the issue because also our colleagues from around the world have given us sufficient information about some of those issues. That's how SAP started. SAP did not start from Nigeria. In fact, it started from other countries, and we have heard of the eel of SAP. Then suddenly it now cropped into Nigeria, and that's how the contestation started. This has not ended because the effect of SAP and some of these neoliberal policies is still in place. And that is why today, in the context of Nigeria, unemployment has become a very serious issue. We have opened our borders very wide. We don't produce. And yet, Nigeria has become a dumping ground for all manner of products. And that's why we have challenge. That's why our currency is not stable. You remember, as far back as 1978, the Naira was stronger than the dollar. But today, what is the situation? When will the issue of devaluation of our currency stop? That's the question, critical question that we must ask ourselves. Must we continue to allow our currency to be devaluated? Whereas other parts of the world, what they merely do, because their currency is the currency, world currency for doing trade. They just produce those currencies, and yet we now allow our goods and services to be transported or transferred to them. So those are the issues. 
And those are the issues that NLC have remained very firm on. And we have been able to, in some cases, succeed it. In the issue of SAP, we created the awareness, you remembered. Nigerians were, were on the same page with uh, uh, NLC. But at the end of the day, they went behind to actually uh, take this uh, 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 loan from uh, AMF. And uh, we are paying the price up to today. And therefore, clearly say, I think as an institution, we have lived to our bidding of advancing the interests of workers and Nigerians at large, but also remaining very consistent in making sure that those rights are defended to the latter. Yes, uh, clearly we have made some successes, as I said, because even the first minimum wage in 1981 was not given to us on the platter of gold. It was through serious contestation. It was then agreed in 1981, where we first label NLC in particular, first actually succeeded in winning the battle to have a national minimum wage. It was 125 Naira. And at that time, 125 Naira was equivalent to $200. Looking at where we are today, what is the value of 18,000? Less than $50. So clearly, this has been the context of our contestation. Yet, in the present system, because in the past, the issue of payment of salary, pension, and gratuity is even given, is taken for granted, that you don't need to contest as a worker or as a unionist that at the end of every 30 day, you are sure that your salary will be paid because it's a legal issue that a worker is entitled to his wages after 30 days. But what do we see? Even in the current democratic dispensation, where a worker will work for nine months, like in the case of Kogi, and he's not being paid. Or where 36,000 workers will be penciled for sack, like in the case of Kaduna. And yet we call it a democratic process. This is the challenge. A lot of things are happening. So clearly saying, there have been challenges, and we are seriously working to confront them. In some cases, as I said, we have succeeded, even in the intervention in some of the states. Some have been very reasonable. We have intervened and we have been able to succeed. But some are recalcitrant. some of those employers, especially our political elites. They have been very adamant, and the engagement is ongoing. But the beauty of democracy is that when you do well for the workers and pensioners, they know, and they will reward you with their votes. But the beauty is also that when you treat them as slaves, as non-entities, time will come also when you need their support. So clearly speaking, this is the approach we are trying to now uh, uh, address, and uh, we are trying to carry all our structures uh, on board. Uh, we have activated uh, our structures, uh, particularly our state councils. You remember we had two retreats, one for the leadership, that is President and General Secretary of the Union, who took place in Calabar, and uh, the one of state councils, which took place in Sokoto, we have come up with very clear ideas on how to continue to respond as we have changes in the world of work because uh, this is, the system globally is dynamic. And therefore, as those issues confront us, we must also look at new means and ways of addressing the issue. And that's why the theme of this celebration is energy yesterday, today, and forging into the future. So clearly speaking, we are looking at the successes we have been able to achieve from 1978 today and challenges, and even the failures. And clearly speaking, going forward is also to devise new means of engagement, new means that we'll be able to deliver. But importantly, we must also carry all our members and structures around. And that's why this program started from the states. Each state of the federation was able to carry out similar activity that is being climaxed today with uh, Edina and also they had some lectures. So it's to carry all our structures on board and to conscientize them to the challenge ahead going into the future. Because the future also starts today. The future is not very far. It starts today. And therefore, for you to step into the future, you must prepare today. So clearly, there have been some challenges, which I have uh, enumerated. And those challenges are very uh, obvious and uh, clear to us. And that uh, those challenges will not actually uh, weigh us down. Uh, instead, it will re-engineer us to revitalize our organization, refocus our organization, uh, above all, to carry the interests of pensioners and workers and the generality of Nigerians on board. But clearly speaking, there are new dynamics, especially the issue of casualization of workers. It's a new development. It's a new milieu in the industrial relation uh, environment. It's akin to slave labor. Where you employ a worker, you will not pay him any social benefit. He will not have pension. He will put in the best part of his life into the service of an organization. And at the end of the day, after serving for 30 years, you just give him a letter and say you have disengaged him. These are not decent work. This is not what the SDGs, particularly Goal 8, is actually advancing to say that in driving the process of development, decent work must be very central. 
If you have a pool of the working poor, certainly the issue of inequality will continue because global wealth have more than tripled. But what have been the condition of Nigerian workers and global workers that create the wealth? Certainly it's nothing to write home about. This is the new form of new, no liberalism. We are workers continue to create wealth, but instead of them benefiting from the wealth, only few are benefiting from the wealth. This is the challenge. And therefore, these are the new dynamics that we are confronting. Workers expect much from you as the NLC president. And um, there is this agitation for a new national minimum wage. What's your take on this following the Minister of um, Labor's um, updates that um, a new minimum wage will be implemented by the next and um, by the third quarter of the year? Well, clearly, uh, the issue of the minimum wage has been one tropical issue that uh, NLC has been uh, up and doing to ensure that uh, it's not swept under the carpet. Uh, let me make the point that uh, even from the first minimum wage we got in 1981, it was not given to us on the plateau of gold by any employer. In fact, it was through serious agitation. I remember that time we even had to uh, proceed on a national strike for even the committee or for the process to be consummated. And clearly speaking, you remember from the last May Day, workers have been well agitated about the issue of review of the minimum wage. One, because it is due, both legally and through evidence-based empirical data. When we signed the 18,000 minimum wage, it was almost at about $140. Today, what is the value of 18000 It's less than $50. So clearly speaking, the value of 18000 when compared to when it was signed in 2011, is no longer the same value. Yet, there have been astronomical increase in the cost of goods and services. When we signed the 18000 minimum, your rice was going for merely 2000 naira. Today, if you want to buy rice, you know for sure, which is a stable food in Nigeria, you know for sure that it's above, over and above 10,000 naira, even the, the most lowest quality. Transportation have gone up. Cost of fuel have gone up. So clearly speaking, from evidence-based empirical data, this demand is legitimate, is justifiable, because the template for setting and review the minimum wage has to be evidence-based. And clearly speaking, this is timely. And that is why we made the demand. As far back as uh, uh, 2000 and, uh, 16, we made a formal demand to demand that the minimum wage should be reviewed. And that's all we can take on this episode of Labor Lens. Join us next week for a fresh edition of the show. I am Sharon Ijasson. Thanks for watching and remember, labor creates wealth.